Have your way among us. Let your glory be manifested, Lord, this morning. See your glory poured out in this place. See your glory come down. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How do we see his glory? How do we see his glory? How do you see the glory of God? By the manifestation of his word, the manifestation of his gifts, the manifestation of his miracles, the manifestation of captives being set free. Is that how you see his glory? I do. That's exactly how I see his glory. I want to see the manifestation of Jesus in every one of us. Amen. Allow him to manifest in you. Like the woman with the alabaster jar. Oh, that woman with the alabaster jar. She released the fragrance of God as she lay at his feet, wiping his feet with the tears, cleaning his feet with the tears and wiping them with her hair. She wiped his feet with her hair. She lay on the ground. She abased herself. She didn't care who was watching. She was so thankful for the forgiveness of her sins. Oh, glory to God. I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful that he forgave me mine. I was on the road to hell until he turned up. On the road to hell until he turned up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Good friend of ours and a pastor was talking to me Saturday night, Friday night, and he said, when was the transition between being a child and becoming an adult? And I said, I don't know. I think I'm still a child. <laughs> when I was 35, I thought it might have happened. But, <laughs> but thinking and reflecting on that over the last few days, I realised that it was when he came into my life that I started to get the knowledge of God and all the childish things and all the rebellious things and all the things that children do started to fall off me. Praise God. And I, that's, that's the only time I can, I can place in my life where there's been an incredible transition and there had to be. Otherwise I'd be dead today. I'd be, on, I'd be in hell. And I ponder on that from time to time and it's good for us to think about how we got saved. Amen. This morning I woke up and I said, Lord, what do you want me to speak on? He said, spiritual warfare. Set the captives free today. Do what I did. <laughs> and uh, I walked in here and it was confirmed to me. It was confirmed to me. You know how many people are suffering deep depression? Christians suffering deep depression. Do you know how many? I'd, be, I'd say over 80% of the church finds itself in a hole <laughs> and has got to dig out of that hole because we're people who have victory. We're people who have the answer. We've overcome. And that's the whole key to us. And as I was speaking to the Lord about these things this morning, I was examining my own life. My God, I lost track of how many things I had to say sorry for. <laughs> Your pastor needs deliverance before you do. <laughs> do you know that? 
No, you can't believe that. You think what a lovely man. Denise will set you straight. <laughs> Praise God. You know, pastors need deliverance. Say that. Say pastors need deliverance. We need deliverance. Musos need deliverance. Where's that muso gone? Oh. <laughs> Amen. Sound desk people need deliverance. <laughs> Amen. Do you know we all need deliverance at times in our walk with God? I know some teaching in church says once you're a Christian you don't need deliverance. Well, that's hooey. How do I know? I've had to deliver, I have had to deliver pastors' wives <laughs> because of the depression in their lives. I've had to deliver pastors. I've had to deliver people who've been in full on for God, evangelists who end up in the nut house. I need to go in there and set them free. You know why? Because we have certain areas that we learn about and we walk in, but we don't want to deal with some areas in our lives, so we shove those things aside. <laughs> and we don't know the root cause, but I want to tell you, you're in an army, and the army has to learn how to fight. And the weapons of our warfare are mighty in God to pull down strongholds, strongholds in us. You know, I'd like to tell you I'm squeaky clean. I'm not. My God, I've got some foul thoughts sometimes. I know you wouldn't believe that, <laughs> this beautiful, sweet face. <laughs> but, I, but I do, and so do you. <laughs> and the problem is I know that. <laughs> you know, I've got the spirit of discernment. I, I look at someone. I went in the hospital the other day and got a man set free, and, and, and set free indeed. Gave his heart to the Lord. And I've heard all sorts of stories about him, but so I don't like hearing about people before I minister to them because then I'm not open to what God has to say. I'm already tainted by someone else's view. And so I say, shut up, what do I want to know? I want to know what God says. And I walked in there and I looked at this man and his eyes were crystal clear. And the Lord said to me, he said, you know you can tell what's in a man's heart by looking at their eyes? You're looking through the, the, the eyeglass into their soul. And I like that. That's one of the gifts of discernment. And I looked at this man, he was crystal clear. And I said, you know, son, I said, you need Jesus to get you out of this thing. Paralyzed from here down within a week. <laughs> and so there he is sitting in the hospital. He's looking out there, he said, he said, I've got hope, Raf. He said, see that garden down there? I'm going to be walking in that garden. <laughs> you know what that did in my heart? I went to lift his spirits up. He lifted mine up just for the wonderful hope the man had in his heart. And I looked at him. I said, all you need to do is commit to Christ. Your sins are forgiven. I look at the woman with the alabaster jar. Her sins were forgiven the minute she started crying at his feet. <laughs> she didn't go through the sinner's prayer. She was at the tabernacle. She was at the altar and the transition in her heart set her free. The transition in her heart saved her. The transition in her heart caused her to be totally free in God. The transition in her heart. Do you know, every one of us is a tweak in our heart away from being full of joy. Do you know that? I was talking to someone today about God being in us and at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. I was talking about the different areas of our life that we need to deal with. And Jesus has been showing me some things. He's been speaking to me about the... Um, the atmosphere that we create when we go somewhere. He's been speaking to me about those, those areas that are parallel to us, to, to the world we're walking in, that we can step into them at any time, that they're there for the, for the taking. He's given us every gift already. He's given us every gift. They're just in different dimensions. We don't understand, but we're walking around and the whole kingdom of God is chasing us. <laughs> We're carrying it in our lives. I'm sorry, 
Dreamers. <laughs> we're, we're carrying it in our lives, this, this wonderful kingdom. Every gift, every promise has been placed within us. And all we've got to do is reach out and get it, even musos. <laughs> you know, everything we need, everything we need has been given to us. We've got to find it. Sorry, I can't keep still. We have to find it. We have to find what it is that we need to carry us through at that time. Oh, you're going to get set free today. <laughs> Praise God. A lot of you are going to get set free today. Amen. Amen. A lot of you come in with burdens. And yet there's a joy. You know, the sun comes out, people feel a bit happier when the sun's out. But I want to tell you, he still wants to deal with the stuff in here. Well, I was asking the Lord today, what do you want me to do? And he took me into Isaiah 61. I've got a T-shirt at home with Isaiah 61 plastered all over it. And written on the back is, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. <laughs> Amen. I want to give you this key and we want to deal with some stuff and, and I want you to deal with the stuff yourself. You know, I can't minister if I don't end up being ministered to by the Lord. Do you know that? And you can't minister unless God ministers to you. But you don't need a pastor. I've got to tell you, you need the Lord. You need that personal relationship with Jesus and learn what he's teaching you. He's teaching you to be free and stay free. That's what, that's what he's teaching you. Thank you, Lord. If, if you've got a spirit on you that's not a God, I'll pick it out. <laughs> but I don't want you to tell me what it is because those demons will lie to you. <laughs> I hate going into a, a deliverance and the person saying to me, oh, I've got this or I've got that. <laughs> you know why? Because demons lie. They're not going to tell you the truth. <laughs> Go by what Jesus tells you. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor he sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God and to comfort all who mourn, Con to console those who mourn in Zion. Zion's another word for church, you know that? To give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And they shall rebuild the old ruins, they'll raise up former desolations, and they'll repair the ruined cities. Oh, my God, I love this scripture, don't you? Strangers shall stand and feed your flock, and the sons of the foreigner shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. I'm the son of a foreigner, you know. <laughs> You'll be named the priests of the Lord, and they shall call you the servants of our God, and you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you'll boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honour. Double honour. Turn to the person next to you and say, you're going to get double honour because God's going to make you a servant who will serve him. Amen. Every one of you will be made a priest. You're all priests and kings. You don't understand who you are. You're priests and kings. You have authority. The minute you came into the kingdom of God, God said, you're my ambassador. You're not the ambassador for Coca-Cola. <laughs> you're the ambassador of the kingdom of God. Amen? I go in anywhere. I go in as a man of God. I don't feel like a man of God sometimes. I've got to deal with all the crap in me. Sorry, is that a good word to use in church? <laughs> Of course it is. <laughs> you know, I've got to deal with the stuff on the inside. Denise will tell you, I've got plenty of it. Big shovel for a lot of manure. <laughs> we won't go there. I've been doing sheep this week. <laughs> Don't go there either, says Denise. <laughs> 
I, fo I fooled him, I had an implement, and I said, look, I'm a dentist, it's okay. <laughs> Got to deal with four-legged sheep and two-legged ones, it's amazing, really. Praise God. The Spirit of God is upon me, even when I'm speaking like that. Can you believe that? You know, we all think we've got to get holier than now. You're anointed because God lives on the inside of you. Amen. It's not you, it's him. When I see you coming, guess who they're looking at? They're looking at Jesus. Turn to the person next to you right now. Say, when I look at you, I'm looking at Jesus. Amen. When you look at me, I don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> but it's Jesus on the inside of me that you recognise. So when I touch you, Jesus touches you. When you touch me, Jesus touches me. Who's been healed when, when we've laid hands on you in this place? There's quite a few hands that raise up. Why? Because it's Jesus touching you. It's not me. When you touch someone, it's not you touching them, it's the Lord Jesus. He uses you. Amen? And we're supposed to be people following in the footsteps of Jesus. He is my template. Not Paul, not Matthew, Mark, Luke or John, but Jesus is my template. He's the one that we're, we're patterning ourselves on. Too much of the church has been taught about Paul and to be like Paul. And I've got to tell you, I'm not like Paul. I'm trying to pattern my life on what Jesus did. He walked into a place, turned it upside down. You know, he took his time to make a whip just to use the whip on the Pharisees at the time? Can you believe that? Can you imagine what was going through his mind when he's making the whip? I'm going to get those blokes. <laughs> Can you believe that? Oh, not our sweet Jesus. Sir. He went in there because he had zeal for his father and they were making his house a den of thieves. You know what a den of thieves is? I've, I've had ministers who we were going to get to come in and minister in the place over the years and they all wanted to bring their books in to sell them. I said, I don't want you to sell your books in the church. They say, why not? I said, it's not a shop. <laughs> it's not a shop. If you've got faith for your living and that's the faith you've got in your book, sell it outside the church. I've had some of them said, well, we're not preaching in the church. I said, we'll see you later. <laughs> that's happened twice. I said, sorry, mate, you're not coming to this church then if that's it. I said, if you can't adhere to that little rule, how are you going to adhere to anything else? You're carrying rebellion in the SC. I don't want that over the people. <laughs> you see, we've got to be discerning sheep and shepherds. Sheep and shepherds. Faith is something God wants to grow in each and every one of us. God wants us to keep going forward. God wants us to walk like Jesus did. Without faith, you can't please God. You heard today, the boats. Some went out with no oars, tiny boats in a huge ocean. <laughs> That's faith. I'm one of those people. I'd go out in a canoe <laughs> if I had to. Why? Because I trust what God said. Something he builds into you, you know. Do you trust me? Do you believe in me? Yes, Lord. We'll go and do this. Oh, but I've never done that before. Yes, that's correct. Just go and do it and I'll teach you as you go. <laughs> we learned by jumping in the deep end. We learned. I, I made a huge mistake. I kept saying, Lord, use me. Use me. Use me. Then when he said, come on, come and do this. Oh, hang on. Isn't there anybody else? <laughs> Isn't there somebody else you can send? Well, you're the first pick for the Lord. Do you know that? You are the first pick. You are where you are because you are God's plan A. Isn't that wonderful? So nothing's going to happen to you. Your job is safe. <laughs> Praise God. God's plan A. <laughs> but you need to learn how to fight. You, you've got to get a bit of fight into you. You know, these goody two-shoe Christians who won't stand, There's no, they've got to have backbone. They've got to be people who stand on what they believe. Amen? 
I, I stand on what I believe. It's caused me grief over the years. But I don't care because I know he's telling me to do certain things. And when I do what he tells me to do, mate, I'm in paradise with him. I'm in peace. I don't care what the world's saying. When we first came down here, all the churches came against what we were doing. Can you believe that? Now we're all fantastic. The Fraternal is a wonderful place here, isn't it? But, eh? they're, all, they're all working together. There was a huge disunity when we came down here. I couldn't believe it. And I, you wouldn't believe what I prayed. I said, all the ones aren't doing their job, can you remove them, Lord? <laughs> and within two weeks, three pastors and Victor quit their jobs. <laughs> And they brought in three pastors who loved the Lord and went forward. You know, like you could see the change in the atmosphere. And so all I know is God wants his people lining up with his thinking. He wants his people going forward, not spinning their wheels and staying in one spot. You know, we can learn and learn and learn. And we're like little greedy gluttons. We keep learning but not doing anything with it. <laughs> feed me, feed me, feed me. What are you going to do with it? You want to get fed, you've got to do something with it. Amen? It's to empower you to go out and do the work. I, um, this scripture just really got to me today. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to set captives free. Set captives free. And, and Luke, that's, that's uh, Isaiah 61, verse 1. Go to Luke. See what Jesus says. Remember, he's our template. Amen. What's he say? He says, 18 verse 1, Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. Anoint, remember what anointing means? We preached about that about three or four weeks ago. The anointing of God is the Spirit of God on you, in you, through you. Just like getting suntan oil on you. To preach the gospel to the poor, he sent me to heal the brokenhearted. And to proclaim liberty to the captive. Be free. Say be free. Do you want to copy God? Do you want to copy God? Say be free. Be free. Be free. Do you want to copy God? How did he create the world? He said be. Didn't he? Be. I'm saying to you today, be free. Only problem is half of you don't know what you need to be free of. <laughs> is that right? Well, people come to me and say, something's in me and it's stopping me going forward. Do I need deliverance? Yes, we all need deliverance continually. <laughs> you demonised flock. <laughs> Praise God. There's times in our life when we need to be delivered of certain stuff that we let in the door. Amen. Demons are sneaky things. They're sneaky things. You know, I can go sometimes for months with a spirit of anger on me. Anybody else like that? Don't put your hand up, I already know. <laughs> with a spirit of anger on me. There's, there's times that I've got unforgiveness for someone and it shows. Amen? It shows. This is the Zoomers. I'm looking for the Zoomers here right now. God wants to set you free. Say be free and put your name in front of it. <laughs> Amen. Say be free. I'm going to teach you how to self-deliver yourself today. Because <laughs> I reckon that's the best way. Because when we come in the prayer closet, we can examine our hearts before God and he can reveal to us what it is. I want to tell you one of the biggest door openers for spirits to come on someone are spirits of rejection. Okay? Rejection is a door opener, brings in everything. And unfortunately we get that from birth sometimes. We get that spirit of rejection from birth. Now you don't know how your parents were thinking about you when you were out. Some people didn't want you. <laughs> you know how many people I see like that that we've got to set free? That their parents didn't want them and they carry this. There are so many reasons for people to get demonised. Praise God. Rejection is one of the major ones. Most people can't recognise rejection in themselves. Do you know that? Can't recognise rejection in themselves. Now, I, I want to get some deep stuff. I'm going to keep going with this tomorrow night here. I want to teach on this. I like the story of the island woman. 
She was ugly as sin. <laughs> ugly. Ugly girl. Oh, don't get uncomfortable, ladies. This story turns out really good, okay? <laughs> she was ugly. And the price of a bride on that island was two cows. Two cows. Top price on the island. But this father was bemoaning that his daughter, my God, he could hardly look at her himself. <laughs> She was ugly, she felt ugly, she was made to feel ugly. Can you imagine the rejection that poor woman had on her life? Huge. Except for one day, the richest man on the island drove past and he went, whoa, <laughs> what a beautiful looking thing. <laughs> he backed up, went and knocked on the door, Talked to her father and said, my God, I want to marry your daughter. I'll give you eight cows for her. <laughs> eight cows. Unheard of. Two cows is the best rate on the island. <laughs> he wants to pay eight cows for this woman. Praise God. Father said, sure, take her. <laughs> he was thinking he was going to be lucky to get half a cow. <laughs> <laughs> I can mess around with this, okay? <laughs> she married him. She ended up the most beautiful woman on the island. You know why? Because she thought of herself as an eight cow woman, not a two cow. She thought of herself as an eight cow woman. She became beautiful because of how she thought of herself, what came from the inside. The price that was paid for her denoted how she valued herself. The price that's been paid for us as Christians denotes how we should be thinking of ourselves. The most precious commodity on earth was paid for you and me, the blood of Jesus Christ. The most precious commodity on earth was paid for you. This is for you guys. Was paid for you and for me. You better start thinking of yourself as a jewel in God's hands because that's who you are. Precious, precious people. I've got to tell you, every time I see someone with rejection, I see someone who's not, not receiving everything they, they've been given not utilising everything they've been given by Christ. I look at you and I see Jesus. That's what I see when I look at you. I don't care who you are or what you've done. I've been dealing with people with horrific crimes that they've committed over the years. Personally, I probably wouldn't have forgiven them. But Jesus has. And if he has, it's because he sees the inner beauty. He sees what's on the inside. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you, rejection is getting kicked out of this place today. Rejection is leaving this house today. Amen? And I'm going to cause you to be able to recognise it because most people can't. They're pushing people away with their rejection. They push people away because of what they're carrying. Can you believe that? Well, I hope you're getting a lesson today. How do I recognise rejection when I'm ministering to someone? Well, I listen with these ears. People think, oh, he gets words of knowledge. He does. But I listen with these ears and I hear what's coming out of their mouth. And these spirits run in threes. They try to copy the Trinity, okay? They're imposters. And when demons come, they come in threes. They try to copy the Trinity. And I look at someone who's got rejection and I think, well, that's the door open. Now, what the, what's it let in? Oh, it's let in lots. <laughs> it's let things in like a critical spirit. You can always tell when someone's got rejection, they're critical as. <laughs> they can't say a good thing. They can only speak a bad thing. Oh, this is going to help some people today. They can't say a good thing. They can only speak a bad thing. They're critical of everything and everybody. Why? Because they've got self-rejection. They don't like themselves. 
Because that's what rejection does. It causes you to push people away. Because you've been pushed away. Was well, this making sense to you? Some people are going like that. Some are going like, I don't know, I'm asleep. <laughs> rejection causes you to reject. So the first thing you're going to see when someone's got the spirit of rejection, they're actually pushing people away. They're critical. And they've got huge, huge self-pity. They blame everybody for everything in their lives. Amen? I've got to tell you, everyone in this place has suffered rejection sometime or other. Every person, everyone that comes into the kingdom of God has got to deal with this sometime. And even in their walk with God, they might be 10 years in the kingdom, 20, 30 years. This rotten spirit still keeps trying. Have you ever noticed that? We've had times of self-inspection. Praise God. I'm sorry, I don't want to look at you because I look and I'm seeing stuff. So I'm going to talk to you like this. <laughs> <laughs> this is good, okay? So now you know that if I'm going to talk to you, it must be the Spirit of God because I'm not going to look at you. <laughs> Praise God. God wants to set us free. That's why he came. He came to what? To set the captives free. And, and I want to, I want to, I've got something here. I want to give this book away later to people that need it. But John Eckert, anybody ever heard of John Eckert? He was mainline church, but he's fantastic deliverance ministry. He's been in ministry 30, 40 odd years. So. Um, now this book, I, I don't want this to put you off, but it's been sitting in my toilet library. <laughs> and I don't, I've got to tell you, I, I read a page out of a book and go like that. <laughs> because I reckon the Bible is the best page. The Bible's the thing that teaches me most. But I opened up this page and there was a list of stuff here that just blew my mind. I'm thinking, he's, he's gone overboard here. And he was saying, based on more than 35 years in deliverance ministry, I found that people who, had, who need deliverance had experienced one or more of these things that I've listed here. There are situations that open the door for the enemy to enter our lives. These experiences give him legal right to be there. But you have the authority to cast him out. Say, so I have the authority to cast out demons. Amen. Particularly in myself. You have the authority to cast them out, be filled with the Holy Spirit and shut the door on the enemy. I encourage you to pray for guidance from the Holy Spirit for this list. Okay, I'm not going to read you the list. I'm just going to read you some of the things. And I'm going to get a copy. I'm going to give this and then get it back and get a copy and give it out. So people can self-examine themselves. Can, that good idea? Because I, 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 I've got to tell you, I like passing the buck. I went, I went to Spokane in America because the Lord sent me there to see what John G. Lake had done. I ended up in Spokane and the town became the healthiest town in America. They didn't have a doctor there. This is chronicled in their newspapers, 1915. The healthiest town in America, not a doctor there, it's a real pity today it's the centre of making medical instruments. Goes to show you how far down that's gone. But while John Lake was there, he opened up a place called the Rookery with technicians and he'd, he'd paid the price in South Africa. He lost his wife. He prayed for the sick. He started the um, Apostolic Church in South Africa. And then he went back to America after he lost his wife, got remarried and, and went to Spokane and started this um, rookery and i got to tell you, everybody who went there got, was healed. Some amazing miracles. One young man who had a, um, his head was shaped like a boat, his cranium, the bone was shaped like a boat, like two points back and forward. And when they prayed for him, that went straight back in the right place and it became perfectly normal. <laughs> 
He got sick of praying for people. He went out the front of his house, laid hands on the lamppost, and when they'd come, he got sick of people coming to him. And he said, go and lay hands on the lamppost. <laughs> and they'd be healed. And we were sharing this on, on Friday night. At our tent meetings, someone gave me a coal which came from Wales. And I knew that I had to get it, but I couldn't ask for it. And the Lord got it to me nearly 10 years later. <laughs> and... Um, and at the tent, I decided to try the anointing that was on this because it was at the revival, Welsh revival. So I tried this. I said, whatever's on this coal, I put it on this post. One of the tent posts. Can you remember that? All the, all the praise of worshippers, all the, all the band came up and we were around. And I said, touch that pole for the anointing. I remember, what's his name, comes here and preaches, see? Steve McAllister. Steve McAllister touched it, did a double flip backwards. <laughs> the anointing just flipped him over. And people were going down around the post. I just, the power on that anointing on that post was amazing. Can you, anybody remember that? Mate, I can. I, well, probably when we did it with leadership. But mate, the whole tent came forward wanting to touch the anointing, and they did. And I remember you can transfer anointing. You can transfer what God's put on your life. Do you hear me? What do you got on your life? Transfer the healing power of God. The healing power of God's on you. You can transfer it. You are God's choice number one. Look at your hand like that. So I anoint my hand, Lord. <laughs> Healing's on my hand. Okay? Healing is on my hand. Can you receive that right now? Receive it right now because he's releasing it. There's a mantle here today to release that. Well, I still want to speak on deliverance. So I can't get past this. God wants you to become ambassadors of his glory. You don't have to lay hands on people. you just got to have it on you. You walk into a place, the atmosphere will change. You're going to enter today into the realm of healing. Step one step forward. Go on, go sideways. Go on, go sideways. Go, move along your seat sideways. Quick, quick, push the person over alongside of you. <laughs> go on, wake him up. Yeah, wake him up. <laughs> push him along. <laughs> Praise God. Come on, you guys go the other way. <laughs> That's how simple it is to move into the realm of the anointing. It's another realm. It's a realm he wants to take you into. You want to walk in healing? Jump into the healing realm. Oh, glory to God. Jump into the healing realm. Who's sick alongside of you? Ask the person next to you, do you need prayer? Go and ask him. Do you need prayer? Do you? Just say this to them. Be healed. You're in that realm where you don't have to touch them. The word's enough. Be healed. Let the Lord heal them. The Lord that's in you, let, them, let him heal them. Let's clean the house out first, shall we? Let's clean the house out first. Let's get the house clean. And then let him fill it. Because you can't leave it empty. Let him fill it. Let the Holy Spirit fill the house. That's who you are. Are you getting anything out of this today? Yeah. Amen. Let him fill you. I'm going to give you a, just, just a little list here. I'll give you a few, okay? You may need deliverance if you were conceived in adultery or fornication. This can open the door for the spirit of lust. If you know your background, yeah, well, there you go, see? That, that, that's just the beginning, okay? Spirit of lust. We don't even like talking about lust in church. I'll tell you, half the church has got lust. Three quarters of the church has got lust. The times in your life when your thoughts will wander off. Be honest with yourselves. <laughs> Amen? Be on. You're supposed to hold every thought captive. Amen? But half the church falls into lust so often. Deal with it. 
Your parents contemplated an abortion. This can open the door for spirits of rejection, death and fear. I know this is going to help people today. This is only one area, okay? You were given up for adoption. Oh, sorry. I'm trying not to have words of knowledge here today. <laughs> but they're coming out anyway. <laughs> I told you you'd be set free today. <laughs> Amen. See, once we know what we're dealing with, we can deal with it. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. You're abandoned by one or more parents. <laughs> You're an orphan. This can open up a door for spirits of rejection and abandonment. You're abused as a child. This can open up a door for spirits of rejection, fear and hurt. You can see rejection is such a door opener. It's almost in every one of these things. You were raped or molested. This can open the door for spirits of lust, shame and hurt. Do you know how many people in the kingdom of God have never dealt with these things and it's happened to them? Amen. I remember in Taralgon one young man came up and no one could set him free and the Holy Spirit said he's been raped, young man. He says, mate, can you forgive the guy who raped you? The guy screamed and out came the spirit and he was set totally free. First time in 18 years or something. You know, there's things that are deeply in people's lives that they haven't dealt with. But I want to tell you, when they get dealt with, the joy of the Lord comes in. Whatever Jesus has won for you on the cross can be administered into your life. Then you can become a, a, a vessel who can minister to others because you've dealt with what's in here. That's why I keep saying to you, pastors are the ones who need deliverance first. Oh, glory to God. Your mother had a difficult pregnancy. That can open the door to spirits of fear that enter through trauma. Actually, I've I, I got pages of these, okay? You have a history of poverty in your family's life because it can man be a manifestation of spirits of poverty and shame. You've engaged in a lifestyle of cheating or theft that opens you up to lying and deceit spirits. Praise God. You've been a chronic gambler or spendthrift. This can be a manifestation of spirits of lust and addiction. Now, I used to be a gambler. And this will tell you, I used to run SP bookmaking, illegal bookmaking. That's only one. I, I, that's one of the only things I'm going to confess to you today. Otherwise, you think, "My God, who's that bloke?" <laughs> exactly. It's all behind me. Thank you, Lord. But I didn't even know that I had lust and addiction from gambling. I thought that was a Another addiction. But any addiction is a demon. Any addiction that someone has is a demon because it causes you to do things you don't want to do. Isn't that good? It's good just to know that. Because when you know that, then you can deal with it. You can get to that place and say, how do I deal with this? Look, I can, I can keep pointing these things out until the cows come home. But that's not going to help you. You might have been involved in a false religion. That brings in confusion and deception. You've been involved in abortion. This can open the door to spirits of murder and guilt. I've got to tell you, I was involved in the early days in my first marriage where I let my wife have two abortions. Do you know how to deal with that? The guilt that that would bring on? That's murder. I'm glad I dealt with it, otherwise your pastor up here would be moving in the spirit of murder. It's okay, I've dealt with it, folks. <laughs> it's all under the blood for me. <laughs> but, you know, we have to deal with things in our lives. We can't keep going thinking we're in the same circle, same things are happening, you're wondering why your life's in the toilet because you don't deal with it when it gets spoken about. You've got a chance. Today I'm going to open up this altar. If you want some prayer, I don't want anybody laying hands on anybody today. But if you want any prayer, come up and we'll anoint you with oil and speak. And there are things that you need to deal with that God will set you free of. Is that, is that helpful today? It'll be Bricky and I who will be doing the, pray, the praying, okay? You can all do this, but I want... Well, the pastors have got to be clean before you're clean. <laughs> 
And, and I've dealt with myself today. The Holy Spirit spoke to me about dealing with myself today. So I did that this morning. And you were up early hours also, weren't you? With the same thing. So you've got to know God's on this. <laughs> this book is excellent for common doors demons use to enter a person's life. How to shake yourself free, self-deliverance. Get it back to me after you've had to read. Praise God. Now I, I'm giving it to her because I know that she'll use it and help someone else. <laughs> All right? She works in a nursing home. You know how many demonised persons are in nursing homes? The majority of them, isn't that right? And full moon, she's going to need that book. <laughs> or any moon, any moon will do it. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just thank you for what we've been sharing right now. That if it's you, Father, convict every heart in this place. That, Father God, they need to be set free. That They can come to you and you can speak into their heart and you will release them. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. The altar's open if you want to. And then we'll have communion after. Can we do that? We'll get the ministry over and done with first. And then we'll come to communion. You're going to see a freedom in communion that's going to release you. I'll get some oil. Come on, Bricky, come out and give me a hand, bud. <laughs>